All right, all right, all right. Uh, welcome, compers, compies, dudes, and dudettes. Let's, uh, oh my god, I have got to switch my windows. God, I hate working on one screen. I hope everyone is doing all right with the uh, writer strike and we're getting through it. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's been a long half year, but we're almost there, I think. Uh, today, Tuesday, it's time for Tuesday Comp Tip Tuesday. Some of those words, not all of them. And um, it's not so much a tip as we kind of want to maybe look where we're at if we're talking about, you know, the, the AI tools that Nuke, uh, the Foundry, introduced about two years ago now. And they're quite decent. I've, I, I've got the feeling that many people, many compers, many supervisors, uh, they... They put it aside because, it, you know, at first glance, it wasn't that efficient. But we're going to talk about how um, how we can use this properly and, and when when this might be useful and efficient and the efficacy of this tool. So allow me to take a sip of coffee. And then we can start. So um, I haven't really, I've kind of dodged this tool as well up until recently where uh, I had a project with a lot of the sim a lot of similar shots and I needed a, a rotor to be done and it was going to take 20 hours at least and they were all very similar almost green screen type interview shots but uh, without the green <laughs> screen which is always fun and so there had to be a uh, rotor done and because they're so similar the shots I thought hey it could be a great opportunity to try, try out this uh, copycat, the AI. Oh God, I hate, I hate the words AI. Let's just call it what it is. It's pattern recognition, right? AI, a learning model. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the way it works, we'll, we'll get a quick rundown. Is so let's say we've got this clip, and sorry for the uh, the size of the viewer here. I wish I could record with both my screens, but alas. So we've got this clip and let's say we've got 10 tens of these clip and we all have to roto out this guy in the uh, in the red in the red jacket here so what we want to do then is take a bunch of frame holds make sure you have a frame range above it that that's a one by one as you can see here in the top corner this makes it so that it con concatenates with all the the time nodes here and it will Put them together here in the append nodes and they're all one frame long now and you're gonna get something like this if you play it now also you want to roto the guy out for each frame as i did here and i just left it in the alpha so once you append the clip then you want to set to to, you want to split up your your image in in a result you know what is what is what is the result we want to have which is the mask that's what it's all about and the uh, the ground truth as oh, sorry the uh, the input which is just the image right so that's just the RGB let me get rid of this I have a Wacom I'm, I'm not using this all right so this is just the RGB now it doesn't have an alpha so it goes into the input of the copycat and then on the left side here we've got the ground truth which is the alpha now you could also just make sure also you want to make sure that these line up which you know you should probably check in the pen clip but um so what you could also do is just make it like a red mask and overlay it that's maybe a bit easier to see right all right lines up perfect now in the copycat itself, the options are quite simple. You can uh, select the amount of epochs, which is really what it's about. And the rest you, you know, you can uh, you can leave for now. I'm not going to get into that. It's it's like batch sizes and, and things. So you want to just test it out if it's if it's even viable for the shot. So you don't want to, you know, it, you know, you don't want to be training for too long and uh, use the GPU if it's available, which is great because that means that you can do other work while you're doing this. So it's not lost time. It, it took about an hour, this, 
which is fine because you can just alt tap. It's using the GPU to render. I can open another com, use my CPU to work, basically. Then there's an inference node, <clears throat> which is gathering those 10,000 epochs and the train model. And I've uh, just pre-rendered this out for you. And we can see the results. And it's not, it's not, let me increase the frame size here. It's not fantastic, as you can see, but it's not bad. It's, it's for an hour, an hour of just kind of doing nothing and sitting back. It's, it, it tracks the red jacket very well. We can see there's a lot of uh, stuff going on because there's a lens flare coming over this, the snowboard and highlights going over the snowboard. So that's the real issue. So now what we can do is we could go back to this copycat. I've just kind of continued here with the same file just to keep it organized for you. So here's the copycat and we want to continue training to 50,000 epochs just to see if we can improve that. And then we get something like this, which is a little better, a little bit less janky, but we still have those highlights on the, on the snowboard there. So what you do then is you can improve the data set by taking those frames that really weren't working. So if we go back here, there's a specific frame uh, range, especially where the, uh, with a flare kind of goes over the snowboard, which is around this frame here. If we look at the, oh, we <laughs> quickly go back. If we look at the, uh, the actual plate, here you can see what happens. So it's not so weird that the AI doesn't catch onto this. So what we do then is we grab those frames, right? the ones that weren't working and we wrote them <laughs> supply the AI and I'm using AI again. God, I hate that word. I'm getting so sick of AI. Let me tell you. Anyway, uh, especially those flare parts and the highlight parts, wherever it isn't working, you want to just add that to the training model. And we're going to do the same thing again. We want, so now I've, I've already got 50,000 epochs in the other frames so what i did is just append these clips and just extend the model basically the library that the learning model can <laughs> can uh, can grab from and we want to set it to just a higher epoch number so i'm just doing another 50,000 iterations and then the result let me just get rid of all of this is quite good we look at this So here, we've got almost no issues. The only real issue is that there, there are a few holes in those, uh, in the flare, which, you know, that's easy enough to take out, but otherwise, pretty good. You know, it's a good starting point. So what I then just did is just roto out the snowboard to fix that issue. Easy enough. And I got rid of some weird, see there's, there's some funkiness going on. So what you want to do is set maybe the black point a little higher to get rid of those, that alpha. Just clean it up a little bit. And then we had, we were doing a little trick here with the, with the PXF distort node. If you remember our little edge extent trick from the first come to Tuesday and we pre-melt it. And now if we look at the whole frame range, it's pretty nice. It's pretty, pretty good. Now imagine if you had 20 of these shots in very similar fashion with the, with the same subject, same background, but the, yeah, just slightly different shots. Now, so look at the result. It's pretty good. And this took me, let's just see. It, it took about one hour to do the, to do the first iteration, maybe two for the second and two for the third. So it took about five hours and let's say 15 minutes to clean up the rest. So that's a pretty good, I mean, you could roto this shot separately 
in in you know a lot quicker you can probably key it uh so the um you know it's for one shot it wouldn't be worth it but if you had 10 shots like this i would say upwards of five shots that are the same the efficiency just grows exponentially so if you have you could just kind of grab all the shots and a bunch of frame holes and train the model uh you could do it at you can train a model at night when you're not working you can train a model during work if you're not using your gpu and it's a pretty good starting point for roto so check it out if you have a if you have like 10 shots that all look similar and you need something specific done to it like roto it out but you don't have a green screen it can definitely be worth it to check out with the copycat node if that's a viable and quick solution all right so uh thanks for watching see you next week maybe bye